It's not just mine, his or her house. This is our house. Hello everyone, my name is Tyrone Lowe. Welcome to my show, The Legends. And I have somebody that I've been trying to get on my show for a while, but she finally landed. I bring you Mickey Affleck. What's up, Mickey? How are you? How you doing? I'm well, how are you? I, you know, I've been called, I've been saying a flick for like, for years, so. Affleck, right. You know, okay, great, that's what's up. So welcome to my show, The Legends. I know it's been a long time. We've been trying to do this. Yeah, but hey, you know, Godspeed, you're here, so it's right. blessed. Um, we're going to talk about your beginning, how you actually got actually familiar with music, you know. Um, let's see. My dad had a, an, an after hours spot in Brooklyn. So my dad always had like a lot of just different music, just a vast music, you know, just all all types of music. And so just um, from him having, you know, having the spot and playing on weekends. So I started doing edits at 12. Um, but fast moving on. Um, oh, and like it. I guess maybe 18 or 19, Larry LeVan actually played an edit of mine at the garage. Wasn't wasn't my actual edit. He redid an edit of an edit that he heard that I had done. Okay. Um, you know, he was dating my um my best friend and they were on re-speech. And um my best friend, God bless him, Stephen Gelby, he was playing one of my mixtapes, and Larry was like, that boy is fierce and he was like no there's a woman and he was like what that's not a woman <laughs> and larry was like she's fierce she is fierce she's over mm -hmm. and um so i got to meet larry and um come in the booth and he it, the, the edit was actually sarone with um betty wright one step up two wow. steps so I didn't really even think about it as producing or anything like that. You know, I had been trying to get in the music business, you know, like um, early 20s, but it was, I wasn't going to sleep with anyone to kind of get in there. You know, it was just predatory, you know, and it kind of like scarred me for a long time, you know, of not wanting to have any parts of it. Now, I mean, I really had like a really bad experience, mm -hmm. you know, with an executive and it just, it just really just put a bad, bad taste in my mouth, you know? And then, you know, with Larry playing the, the edit, you know, hanging out a little, a little too late and, and being afraid. My dad was like, I don't know where you going, but you keep pushing me. <laughs> Next time you come home at this time, I'm throwing everything out. And he was not playing. He threw me out in the rain. When I came home, finally, everything, when I tell you all my vinyl, my clothes was out on the lawn in the rain. Wow. So that was like, you know, I'll be honest, after that point, going in the garage was like not fun anymore because I had to become an adult. Fast right. In a hurry. You know, I got thrown out with $20 in my pocket and taking the train to... um you know, someone that I had just met and the train stopped because it was raining that bad. I lived on it on a, on, you know, on a, like an out, an L line. So it couldn't make it to Manhattan. I had to take a cab. So that was my last $20 to get to Manhattan. And I was crying in the cab. I told the guy, my dad just threw me out. This is my last $20. When we got there, he said, I'm not going to charge you, but I want you to promise me that you're going to be something in life. I was like, that's easy. So, you know, but um, I got back into production because it was just killing me, Tyrone. That I, I can imagine. It mm -hmm. was eating me alive. You know, my friends was like, oh, my God, we can't take it. 
you know, um, and from, from Larry, you know, there was a little buzz going around and I was supposed to have a meeting with um, Judy Weinstein and getting thrown out. I never made the call. I, mean, I can't say a meeting, but she told mm -hmm. me to call her. Right? And that's so, you, because uh, Judy right? Weinstein for the records, of course, right? Yeah, and so like getting thrown out, I just like literally left with the clothes on my back and never called. And so that ate me alive, Tyrone, when I tell you for about 20, 25 years. Okay. I mean, bad, really, really bad. If I had a cocktail, you were gonna hear the story. <laughs> <laughs> my friends was like, girl, we can't take it no more. Just please, just, you are just going, we can't take it anymore. Just do, you know, and I, and, and I think it was in 2000 and, um, 2004 after my, my mentor, um, John Giuliano Jr. had passed away. I was like, you know, I really got to do this because we would sit in my in my kitchen and we would talk about David and 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 he was like, man, you know, I just had the chance to do it all over again and that kind of stuff. And so in 2004, I um, you know, built a little studio back in this room. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I've had like big studios, and I'm right back in this in this small room with like half of the stuff that I used to have making some of the best music right now because I'm at peace. And but you are a hot, you are a hot, you are a hot producer. Um, I follow you a lot through the years and, um, you know, especially with Georgia and other things that you actually encountered, you know, um, I can say you're very hot, you know. But, you know, I mean, anyone can use the title producer. Right, true that. Mm -hmm. This really means that you're just financing a project. I'm a songwriter, I'm an engineer. Um, I am hands-on in everything that I do. Um, there's nothing um, of any track. It's funny. I could be at a club, and I'm blessed to to be, you know, able now to have my music, you know, played on a big system. Well, not now, but you know. And it's funny because if I hear a track, I I know just it's like the map. I know everything about that track. Mm -hmm. I call them my babies, you know, and for a long time, I just didn't want to share them with the world. I was like, I'm not giving my babies out to this evil, cruel world out there. <laughs> Disrespected. But now I'm at a place where I can share it. You know, I'm, I'm able to share it. I'm able to let them go mm -hmm. and not hold on so much. And I'm also grown. Have, I have really grown as as a producer, right? I, I've seen my growth. I, I I feel my growth. At first, I wanted to be really, really eclectic, like like Prince, and just just have my own genre, like right. Not for follow a formula, not be four to the floor, or you know, I got put like in an Afro category. But I'm like everything, you know, and like with the with the mix, America's pandemic that. Um, I did with um, Janine Sugar Lyrics Lion mm -hmm. that mix that David um, remixed. You know that was something that I had for ten years. Okay, and that's the rock side of me. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm everything. I just want to be able just expressed all the type of music that I love. You know, through your journey, um, who was your idol DJ? You know, who actually gave you that encouragement to actually give you that drive? Because everybody, everybody has one. I have several. Okay. I have several. Tell the viewers about that. Yeah, David Morales, Louis Vega. Um, I, I like Oshun Lade. Mm -hmm. um, and and as far as like wanting to do the style of say like Afro, I would have to say it was like a beat of soul. Like he was like like in like two thousand and four. I remember buying you know like on vinyl. I was like, that's the kind of music I want to produce. Um, same thing with Oshun Lade. It was like, that's the kind of music that I want to produce, like a style like that. Um, but I'm, I'm Panamanian, so I have a, a lot of jazz, you know, for my dad, a lot of um, Afro-Cuban, a lot of mm -hmm. salsa. So all of that mixed up, that's what the Afflicted Soul mix is. It's mm -hmm. all of that. It's, you know, when I make music, I'm like, okay, if I could see my grandmother dancing to it, 
then I know that it's a, it's I got a good feeling about it, you know. That's but early thing. on, um, my early influence was the Orman Brothers. I'm a big Orman Brothers fan. I oh, got wow. okay. Yeah, I got to meet Greg Orman, and that mix, that pandemic mix, is actually an ode to the Orman Brothers, you know. Um, and I got. You know, I, I told him, I said, you know, I've been a fan of yours since I was a kid, man. Mm-hmm. Like, like he saved my life. And, you know, this blonde white dude is looking at me, you know, this black woman saying that. And I was like, I had tears in my eyes because, you know, I like identified with that kind of music, like going to the concerts and, 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 you know, Led Zeppelin. And like, I was like a different kind of. Um, friends, it was just my music and the things that I loved, and I just stayed in my own bubble, and that was it. Like I loved Hollywood, you know. Okay. Yeah. If you had to do anything over again through that journey, what would it be? It would be not to hesitate, just to do it. And that's like when I mentor people, I tell them, don't hesitate, just do it. Like I waited. 25 years living in fear from a bad, from bad experiences, Tyrone, you right. know, and that was a long time, you know, I was like, damn, I could have did that when I was slim and I wait to, you know, to get older. I'm not going to say old, but older, need, put on weight, need glasses, you know, so I would say do it in your youth. Don't be afraid, be badass. Just do it. Like okay. don't, don't hesitate. That's my one thing that that I feel that I do is procrastinate too long. Okay. Well, you know, we're going to take a slight break and we'll be back. And viewers, we'll be back with Mickey Aflat. Flip. <laughs> We got some fun people in the house tonight. The dynamic the soul sounds of for the love DJ of Tyrone Low. Hello, everyone. We're back with Mickey a flat, a flick. <laughs> I get it right one day, Mickey. Just say it. It's okay. Just say it. Don't correct But me. I'm back with my friend Mickey. You know, um, we're going to talk about where you're at and where you're going right now. Let's talk about some highlights that you're actually dealing with right now, as far as your career is concerned. Um, I think one of the one of the the the, the biggest highlights for me was playing in Croatia. Um, that was that was a real big um highlight and i'll say this um you know i've had people and barbara said to me it was at wmc and i don't know if they're going to have it this year but um she said to me go where you're celebrated not tolerated and we were sitting down and barbara's um she is a mentor you know okay one of the few women i shouldn't say few but you know it's good to have a woman that's a mentor 
And she said that to me and, and she said, you know, go overseas, travel, see what see what the world is listening to, Mickey. See, you know, how people, what the DJs are playing. I said, you know what? I'm going to do that. So I kind of was like, I'm going to go in groupie mode. You know, I went. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> with my, you know, I, I, I tell people I, I could travel the world with my Louis Vuitton backpack and my Gucci sneakers. All right. I'm a little more humble now. I could just travel the world in just a backpack and and a, and a pair of Converse's, you know. But at the time, I traveled the world. <laughs> you know, Mickey, um, there's a lot of people out there that's just getting into the craft and Ever since this pandemic actually started, a lot of people are coming out the woodworks, you know. That's and, good. Uh, That's good. And I, it is a good thing because it showed that the craft is really live. And, yeah. you know, through your experiences with this craft, what can you tell the newcomers? I would tell them, um, don't listen to the naysayers, you know. And I, I would see it on, on live, on, on, like, say, Facebook, and people were like, oh, you know, why is this one going live? And, oh, this one's going. It doesn't matter. If you got three people in your room on switch, that's all you need. It's three people. Call three friends, call your mama, a cousin, and your next door neighbor and tell them I'm going to be on, on Twitch, right? Because that's how the algorithm works. And just follow your dreams. Don't don't let any, anyone discourage you from what you're doing. I say to, I, I have, you know, someone that said to me, can you mentor me? Um, I want to produce. Can you mentor me? And I said to her, no. And that was kind of harsh. And I said, I will mentor you when you've put in the work. Mm -hmm. Right? People want that they want the title, but they don't want to put in the work. Right. People they're on the side. You know, you have to know your craft. That's like any anything. You know, I'm I'm a retired, you know, union electrician. I had to learn how to be an electrician. How long did that take? Five years being first an apprentice. Master right. Ohm's law, right? <laughs> so, so, you know, okay. people have the title. I'm a producer. What does that mean? Producer only means that you finance the project. You need to learn your craft. You need to know what it is to make a beat. Make a beat. All right. If you want to bring a musician in, that's fine. You know, but know your craft. You know, so when I said no, I said, what you need to do is go on YouTube and sit for some hours, take some of your the, the music that you like and try with some edits first. Get your way around some edits, you know, and, and put in the work. And then from there, I mean, I can't mentor you when you don't know music. Right. Music is theory. It's like exactly, being you know, yeah. an electrician, it's theory. You mm -hmm. said old law, you know, so you need to know the dynamics. Exactly, yes. So, you know. Um, so, Mickey, um, Let's talk about your record with Track Source because it's very impressive, you know. Um, <laughs> let's tell the viewers about that. About what? Your your record with Track Source. I mean, your tracks, your production. You know, um, with you've had some really nice. Uh, how can I say? Uh, ratings on Track Source. I would not really put them in the equation. Huh? I'll tell you why. Okay. I would just rather my music speaks speaks for itself, okay, mm -hmm. and not anyone else's platform. Right. Um, and that and that being said, is I had last year, 2020, mm -hmm. I produced some of the best music of my career, mm -hmm. and I didn't make their list. Right. And oh wow. I, I had people, you know, inbox me and was like, you know, that's some bullshit. I don't know if I should curse, but that's some. BS. No, we, we have to we have to blot that out. Okay. <laughs> I got a potty mouth. I'm sorry. That's okay. Working construction. But you know, I mean, I've 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 been vocal about things that I, I didn't I didn't feel that was right. And there's right. a price to pay when you're the one out in the front speaking. You know, I've learned now to keep my mouth closed. Mm -hmm. I'm not the only one seeing certain things. So if they're not speaking about it, people that's already on top then mm -hmm. I don't need to speak about it. Cause you know what? I'm still climbing the the mountain with roller skates. Okay. okay. With roller skates, I hear you. <laughs> All right. so I'm not going to do anyone's mortar. You know, right. you don't like it, you can speak on it. But I will speak about the success of 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 my music 
mm-hmm. without anyone's chart. And right. the greatest success is is when it's played, you know, by 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 DJs that I look up to. Mm-hmm. That to me, there's there's no chart in the world. And and then the crowd reaction. Right. Like, going back to Croatia, I was afraid to play my own music. And I remember being in Croatia and we were on uh, on um, the ship. It was like a pirate ship. And and Ananya Vega was playing. And and one of my tracks came on. It was called um, Stop Apologizing. And that bass line, well, I just got a goosebump. But that bass line, I have to say it, that bass line happens to be one of my favorite bass lines ever that I did. And when that track came on and, and we were on the we were on the ship and they blew that horn and I was like, let's go. I mean a boat like <laughs> you know, and 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 she kind of gave me this look and I was like egging her on and the sister bond, that kind of thing. And then when I got back, you know, my better half said, see, see, she's playing your music. You need to play your music. You you see that? And that just gave me that encouragement to not mm-hmm. to fear, you know, right. anymore, you know. But that's that's like a highlight. So I don't like to say charts, but the right. people and the DJs, that, that gives me the hype. Like if I see like Louis or David or Joe Corsell or Danny Cribbett, mm-hmm. You know, those are to me. Those are those are the those are the legends. Right. I know that they just don't play anything. I'm gonna be honest. They those guys. They are very particular as to what they play. So mm-hmm. I was doing a track. I was producing a track called um, "The Chase," and and my partner was in the kitchen, and I took out the piano, and she said, "Oh no, put that piano back in there." And she said. That's that's a Danny Cribbit track. I said, mm-hmm. Danny, no, Danny. She said, that's a Danny Cribbit track. That right there, mm-hmm. that is a Danny Cribbit track. Put that damn piano back in there. And sure enough, Danny played it. And he played it at ADE at a Paradise Garage like reunion party. Right. To play something new at a theme event like that was huge. So that to me is, is my success. Tom. Any shout outs to anyone? Yeah, I got a shout out um, people on my label. I got a sh- shout out Georgia C with Feeling Blessed. I got a shout out my boy Amori. We got something coming up called um, Like Minded People. Um, I got a shout out Danielle Morgan, my better half, who keeps me grounded. Um, my family, my mom, my dad, my sister, my nieces, they also, um, you know, are, are creative. I don't want to say uh, producers, but creative. They mm-hmm. did a track when they were younger. Um, my best friend, Gregory Smith, who is the person that keeps me in check. Um, David Morales, because he, he makes sure that I stay on point. Like he calls me like we speak once a week, even when I want to give up. What you doing? What you working on? What, what, come on, Mm-mm. you know he never lets me slip. Um, Barbara, if I if I need a prayer or I just need some some motivation, Barbara Tucker will always give me that motivation. Right. Um, you know, um, and then you know there's some some my my local peeps. You know that um, Ian Friday, Carlos Mina. You know there's a guy by the name of um, um, Stacy. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh man, I can't remember Stacy's last name, but he goes by Stacy, not a DJ. And I, I'm angry at that name because you know, <laughs> you know really? I mean, you, you're doing it. Take away that title, but you know, those are like my local peeps. You know that Denise, the dancer. You know, um, Demi Slim, um, Shay Shayla Ray. I mean, those are my peeps. You know, New York. Okay. Tracy Dickens, you know, I, I just like to keep, you know, Des Uno, people that just been with me, Paula Slade, they won, like just local peeps. I'm lo- I'm, you know, I don't get into like a status or anything. You right. know, Regina, like Regina, um, she also bakes cakes, but Regina was very in- influential getting me my first gig with Louis Vega when I came back. Her and DJ okay. Enron, mm-hmm. you know, so I just I'm just a New York. I'm Panamanian, but just a Brooklyn girl at heart, you know. All right. 
Yeah. So, you know, um, it's, I've been flattered and this has been, I mean, I'm really honored to have you on my show. I thank you so much for actually being on the legends and being informative to the viewers. That was and, really quick, man. We could have did this like four years ago. Oh yeah. Well, you know, timing, I was doing yeah. things, you're doing things, you know, and, um, it's all about timing. Well, you know? I want to say, you know, hey, to the people out there, pick up feeling blessed. It is doing well on the charts. So if people feel charts matter, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> well, you know, viewers, support this sister because she's really, really into what she does, you know. I'm and yeah, and um, impress her with just actually giving her some feedback and actually supporting her music. And this is Tyrone Lowe. I'm the host owner and producer of the legends and um stay tuned for another t Low video productions thank you tyrone thank you This is our house.